the main people podcast available everywhere click subscribe so you never miss an episode sarah long on the main people podcast sarah thank you and congratulations for 20 years of excellent main weather <laughs> prognostication you're the best yeah <laughs> thank you very much oh man and now comes the age joke right <laughs> <laughs> um have you uh have you uh, ever gotten tired of people saying, oh, it must be nice or you can have a job you're wrong half the time and you still get paid for it? No, no. You know, I figure those people are just jealous, right? I mean, don't we all wish we had a gig like that? Uh, but truly, you know, truly, if I were wrong all the time, I would not still have my job. <laughs> <laughs> right. As I much guess, as we like true. to joke about it, right? <laughs> and I don't think anybody... I don't think people really realize how difficult it is to uh, when you're on TV, but we're we're going to get to that later on in the third segment with okay. you know one of those uh, one of the we'll try to explain the green screen and how it works for everybody. Oh geez, okay, I should have brought um, an engineer in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted I want you to explain how you manage it because it seems super okay, confusing okay. to me because you don't see anything and you have to move backwards. Is that exactly. is that correct? Okay, That's so correct. all right, we'll get to that. Yeah. We'll get to that coming up. Um, there's an old saying, it's lonely at the top. And I know you started early in your career at the top of Mount Washington. Um, I know we have a video of what it looks like. This is somebody working. This is from the, uh, Mount Washington observatory YouTube page. Yep. Um, yep. you lived at the top of Mount Washington. You were up there, not at this date, but for four years and you would do stuff like this. Uh, yeah, exactly. Doesn't that look fun? Talk about a good no. way to get your aggression out. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Guy, and really cool. So He doesn't even look ask? warm. He doesn't even look warm. No. Yeah. I mean, the good thing about living and working up there is that you're never too far away from a doorway to get back inside, um, which is good. And a lot of what you're seeing there uh, in terms of what they're clearing, that observer is clearing off, is actually frozen fog or rime ice. And so, you know, Mount Washington is in the clouds or in the fog 60% of the time. And, you know, the faster the, in the winter time, those, those uh, droplets in the fog become super cooled. So that means the second that they touch anything, they freeze. And so you actually get these feathers of rime ice that form into the wind. It's really cool, unless you're trying to take weather observations. And then of mm -hmm. course the ice covers everything. So our job, one of our more important jobs was climbing up into the tower in the middle of some of the worst weather. We're talking winds over 100 miles an hour. You're completely exposed. You're the tallest standing person on the northeast in the northeast, and you've got to clear ice off of the instruments. Some of these instruments are even heated, but they still need to be babysat. This is a more recent video of you up there, and. Uh... Mm -hmm. You ever try the like leaning into the wind thing and see how far you could lean over and not oh, fall? Oh, yes. this is the tower you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. So this is looking over the entire summit. You can see that's exactly it. You know, people say, oh, well, what do you use to clear off the ice? Do you brush it off gently? No, we use a full on crowbar to use vibration. <laughs> to oh my cause that ice to disperse. And so uh, we were actually sitting in the last bit of that video um, at dinner time. And, you know, as exciting and as cool as the weather observation part of it and, you know, the worst weather in the world, it's also such a great place to really get to know people and especially your coworkers. I mean, it could be a nightmare, right? You're stuck up there with somebody you don't like. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, luckily, I, I was mostly stuck up there with people I enjoyed. But um, every day, you know, everybody has different schedules. There's somebody taking weather observations 24 um, seven, but you all come together for dinner which is awesome. Nice. So you all kind of do breakfast and lunch on your own, but we all would sit down for a family style dinner every single night. And it was uh, some of my favorite memories. So it's not really lonely at the top. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and let's be honest, if we were, if we really enjoyed being around people that much, maybe we wouldn't have signed up to work on top of a mountain. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess, I so guess it's true. There's a little party that enjoys the isolation. Yeah. Are you, are you ever envious of people, meteorologists in your position in other climates that don't have to uh, have that range? Like like today, for instance, in Maine, southern part of the state is sunny, 60 degrees here, early spring. And uh, what was it, Skowhegan, two feet of snow? 
Uh, not two feet, but yeah, Skowhegan got snow. Rangeley got two, I think just under two and a half inches of snow. Oh, inches. Okay. So, <laughs> it wasn't yeah, feet. yeah, not okay. feet. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Then I would have been wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, you still have a job. Um, <laughs> right. You've had one for such a, here's an early picture of me and you together. This is great because, oh, yeah. uh, because you're a WMTW now and you were, uh, you were different at a different uh, TV station then. And this was uh, this was at WPOR years ago. At some point, uh, both my partners oh. were off. You came and filled in that morning. I found this one uh, yeah. on my Facebook page, um, and love that was that. really it was a really great time when you were on the air with us. Really love that a lot. But that was early in both of our careers. Right, right, and you know it's um, going from the top of Mount Washington, um, where we truly um, couldn't shower for a week at a time. Huh. And then having to sort of turn on my heels and become presentable um, mm -hmm. was was an interesting transition. And and I was thankful to have a year forecasting in Bangor uh, at WVII before I made it down to Portland, which was my ultimate goal. And of course, once I landed here, that was in uh, 2002, um, we started doing the morning show together on POR. And it, I had such a blast with you guys. And, and you and I were writing about this recently. You know, when, when you're on air and you're trying to be taken seriously, especially as a young woman, um, mm -hmm you really try to gain trust, right? And you think you have to be serious and um, especially when it comes to talking about the weather that will affect people's days. Yeah. You guys helped me realize that there's something to just letting loose and letting people know who you are. And one of the hardest things is to just be yourself on TV. And I don't know if you went through this on the radio as oh, well, yeah, definitely. because it's easier to sort of put up this um, persona. And then when you start getting emails or, you know, people commenting like, oh, I don't, I don't like that meteorologist, Sarah Long, you can say, well, that's just my TV persona, right? And so mm -hmm. once you actually learn to just be yourself, you also have to learn to take those comments with a grain of salt. And I think that's why you're so protective at first when you put yourself out there, but you guys really helped to loosen me up and your viewers too, or, or listeners. I, listeners, I think we need to address more about that, um, how critical people can be, especially yeah. uh, to a woman, because I know you've shared some of this with me in the past and hopefully, so we'll, let, we'll, we'll wait another segment or two, but maybe in our third segment here, uh, they're not long segments, don't worry. Um, okay. Because uh, <laughs> I really want to talk about that specifically because I think um, I think women will definitely identify with it and understand it and certainly feel for you in, in some of the things that you've dealt with that probably nobody really knows because you certainly can't right. talk about it on TV. Um, but first, I want to talk about the one vintage thing that Sarah Long loves more than anything else. <laughs> and we'll do that in the next segment. The way my dad brought me up was always to work hard and to treat people well. We try to keep our goal to make people feel comfortable buying their cars and feel comfortable with the people they're working with. Nice. Oh, it looks good over here. So become part of our family. We really mean that. Without question, we're in this together. We're going to take care of you and treat you like your family anyways. Yankee Ford has so many people willing to help and make this tough time a little bit easier. Radio207.com only plays original country music from Maine singers, songwriters, and bands. Streaming online and on your smart speaker. Radio207.com is on the air now. Radio207.com. Only Maine, only country music. Your next online event can be perfect thanks to virtualproductionsgroup.com. The Mean People podcast couldn't happen without them, and they can make your remote streaming event absolutely technically perfect. High quality live and pre recorded productions for corporate events, weddings, tournaments, charities, and more with virtualproductionsgroup.com. All right, Sarah, let's start this segment with this photo uh, because this is uh, this is you. It's your husband, Tom. I don't know who else. There's a lighthouse, and there's your oh, vintage scooters. You yeah. love these Vespas so much. Oh my goodness. Oh, but your you husband's not even in the picture. No, Tom no, must have been Tom's taking the picture. the picture. Yeah, Jason on, uh, well, on my left, but uh, Jason with the red beard. We'll just say he's my husband, right? Tom has a red beard <laughs> as well. So, um, but that's uh, Jason Willie. And then you have Daryl Clark in the middle. 
Um, he is owner, founder of Cumberland County Scooters, and uh, they're based in Kennebunk now. And then, of course, me. Um, but yeah, Tom always wanted a Vespa, my husband, Tom. And so I got him one for his 30th birthday as a surprise. My dad helped me with the surprise because my dad actually drove Vespas when he was uh, in his teens. So, and I have this great picture of him on an, on an old Vespa. So I think it's an old GS, but um, so because I got him this scooter, he started talking with people in the community that were also on some of uh, the vintage scooters and the rest is history. It's such a cool group of people. You, you go to summer campouts and rallies with each other. Can't talk about everything that happens there, uh -huh. um, but uh, it's quite a crew. It's quite a crew. What happens on a Vespa stays on a Vespa. Just doesn't have the same exactly. ring to it as the Vegas line, but still. Um, <laughs> It's uh, it's a lot, much like riding a motorcycle. It's a very short season. You have to enjoy it while you can. Probably even yeah. shorter season on a Vespa than on a motorcycle. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And Tom's always the last one in our group that does a ride on Thanksgiving and the first one in our group that does a ride on Easter. And sometimes people will join him weather dependent. Um, usually I'm not there early season or late season. <laughs> right. Do you have any favorite I rides? I like those 80 degree days. Yeah. <laughs> of course you do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, leaf peepers have rides. People take rides, you know, through the mountains yeah. and along the coast and at different times for, you know, different scenic views in Maine. What's the best yeah. Vespa ride, though? It's got to be a particular kind of road with, you know, good Vespa traffic. Right, exactly. You like some nice turns, nothing that's too severe. Um, you also want a road that's not too busy because you don't want to get caught up in traffic. So a lot of back roads around southern Maine um, are really the the way to go. You know, whether it's you want to get off of Route One to some of those some of those back roads. Mm -hmm. All right. Speaking of weather, let's talk about weather a little bit yes. more. About what okay. the weather in Maine and what kind of impact that had on you choosing to be a meteorologist going to school for it so it, i mean was it was it growing up in new england uh and the way the weather changes every five minutes that made you want to do this and, and certainly made you want to stick with it right um this is going to be a little bit of a longer answer but i'll kind of try to keep it interesting you know i think we all can sort of think back to weather events when we were growing up, right? Uh, I think thunderstorms, certainly snowstorms, um, often stick out in people's memories. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that was the case for me as well. Hurricane Bob, I remember uh, that moving, moving through. Um, but I never thought about weather as a career. And I grew up outside of Boston and um, when you think about the exposure that most of us have to meteorology, it's mm -hmm. on air, somebody giving you a local forecast, right? right. Yeah. And I never even considered that I could do something on television with meteorology or with forecasting of weather. I also am petrified of talking in front of live audiences. So the idea of like oh. being in front of a camera, I know, was, uh, I mean, I was like, all right, that's clearly not what I'm going to do. So you got over that part. I went off to. I went over. To, uh, I went to school to become a physical therapist, and I lasted one semester because a, a girl in my dorm um, was a meteorology major, and it was the first time I had ever even considered that or thought of it. Um, and I was fascinated by her homework. So by second semester, freshman year. <sighs> I was a meteorology major and the rest is history. And so I, you know, it, it goes back to making sure that people are represented, right? I think I would have had a very different experience if I had saw somebody that looked remotely like me um, mm -hmm. in the field of meteorology. Yeah. Wow. And so, and so I tried to, you know, work with groups and, and I've had many ment mentees over the years, um, not all, women or girls, but, uh, but some guys as well. And I, I just think it's important to, um, help those people come up and, and, uh, come through the field. You must be that representative for a lot of women having done it, not to age you, but you know, having done it for two decades now in Maine, there, right. there must be a lot of females that are like, I, I can do that too. Was it a male dominated 
Because it, it's not at this point. It, was it oh, very male dominated when you started? Yeah, it's it's less male dominated dominated than it is now, um, but it's still a male dominated field. Um, that's not only broadcast, but also meteorology as a whole. Now, on the broadcast side of things, I think the percentages are a little bit closer um, versus, say, research meteorology um, mm -hmm. you know, professors, uh, things like that. But um, when I started, I mean, there were a lot of things that I was first of. So on Mount Washington, I was part of the first fee all female crew. Um, I was there at the dinner table when for the first time there were more women than men um, at the dinner table on the summit. Um, you know, I'm not sure about, I think I might have been the longest running morning uh, meteorologist in terms of a woman, but you know, the, you, you, you just keep your eye on what you want to do. And, and, um, yeah, I should probably look that up actually and see sort of. Yeah. Where I that's fall. hall of famer stuff right there, Sarah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Someday yeah. that's coming. Okay. All right. Let's take a, uh, let's take yeah. a look at this picture I found on your Facebook page because uh, okay. uh -oh. I did some, I did uh -oh. some, or, wait, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's where I found this picture of, of you, but I thought it was a, it was a really good story. No, it was a, it was a story that WMTW did about you. It was 20 things you don't know about Sarah Long. And oh, one of these goodness. was, a, yeah. it was a picture of you and I don't know who uh, on a vacation, uh, you were on a horse and, uh, and it did not oh, turn gosh. out well. And I thought it would just be an interesting story for you to tell. Is that Tom? That's this Tom. is a long time ago. Okay. Um, this is a very long time ago. Yeah. So this is not was a good before, story. No. Uh, and look at how sweet the horses are. I mean, totally not their fault. So this was 2001. Um, we were in Big Sur. Tom and I brought our tent. We went camping in Big Sur. And he thought, you know what? At this point, we had been together for, I don't know, seven years or something like that. And he thought, I'm going to do something romantic and I'm going to. I'm gonna schedule a horseback ride along the beach. Along the water, on the beach, that's I very mean, sweet. Amazing, right? Turns out I am so allergic to horses that we spent the rest of the day in Big Sur looking for Benadryl. In the next oh two God. days, I was just laid up in the tent. My eyes were swollen. There's a, a great picture of Tom and I on the beach after. I'm dressed in like all black with a baseball hat and my eyes are like out to here. Um, turns out I'm allergic to horses and rabbits. Is there a connection? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't but know yeah, if I've ever run into <laughs> Poor Tom, he tried. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully yeah. it wasn't and, the know, last and, time he made that attempt. The, no, no, he's no. he's definitely we, we stay away from live animals mostly now. Um, but uh <laughs> you know that picture makes reminds me of something that we were talking about it er, earlier. Um, just how difficult forecasting can be in Maine and mm -hmm. you know what it's like for meteorologists in other parts of the country. And I cannot imagine forecasting for a spot like Southern California, where 300 and, you know, 20 days out of the year, what you see is what you get, right? Sun, yeah. reasonable temperatures. Mm -hmm. um, when we get into a pattern here in Southern Maine, where it is sunny, partly sunny, seasonable temperatures for five, six, even seven days at a time, I really don't enjoy my job. <laughs> I enjoy the other parts of it, you know, and communicating with people, but it's just not fun. It's just not challenging. Right. Um, what's wrong with us? What, you know, it's, the, it's <laughs> New England meteorologists. There's a screw loose, I think. You really have to savor that moment because it won't last very long. Don't worry. Oh, right, right. right? <laughs> That's right. true. Yeah, uh, take, okay. take the moment last. <laughs> Why it's so difficult to be a female on TV we did touch on that, and we'll touch more on that uh, coming up in the next segment with Sarah. Your next online event can be perfect thanks to virtualproductionsgroup.com. The Mean People podcast couldn't happen without them, and they can make your remote streaming event absolutely technically perfect. High-quality live and pre-recorded productions for corporate events, weddings, tournaments, charities, and more with virtualproductionsgroup.com. 
Radio207.com only plays original country music from main singers, songwriters, and bands. Streaming online and on your smart speaker. Radio207.com is on the air now. Radio207.com. Only main, only country music. The way my dad brought me up was always to work hard and to treat people well. We try to keep our goal to make people feel comfortable buying their cars and feel comfortable with the people they're working with. Nice. Oh, it looks good over here. Don't so become part of our family. We really mean that. Without question, we're in this together. We're going to take care of you and treat you like your family anyways. This looks awesome. Yankee Ford has so many people willing to help and make this tough time a little bit easier. All right, Sarah, let's start this uh, last. Uh, this has been so much fun talking to you, by the way. Um, let's start with this uh, green screen uh, video of you, because can you explain for all of us who watch TV at home and see you, mm-hmm. how does this green screen work? I know that the computer superimposes, you know, the maps and stuff yeah. on it. But for you, the meteorologist, yeah. it's completely different. Right. So what you're seeing here uh, is me as I would present weather to you folks at home. So there you go. That's what I look like on your television set, um, that little monitor. But this is what I look like in the studio. Um, And yeah, it looks different, right? So Mm -hmm. when I'm looking forward, I'm actually looking at a camera with a picture of myself. And so that's how I know where to point as I'm sort of looking back at the viewer. And then we have... You can see them there, those monitors on either Mm -hmm. side that I can keep track of what I'm pointing at as well. Um, When I started on air, that took some getting used to for sure, Um, which is why it was good that I started in Bangor and, you know, smaller market and Mm -hmm. and um, everything's backwards. It's like in a mirror Um, and and then it just becomes second nature. And the, the, I think we forget how strange it is until you get a news anchor that's standing in front of the green screen for some sort of segment and mm-hmm. they start trying to point to things on the map, like for fun. And all of a sudden they're going and, like, uh, and, yeah, um, wait a second. No, it's over here. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it definitely is a, a skill that takes some some getting used to. But, you know, on the flip side, the anchors um, read their scripts for the entire newscast. You know, we'll banter back and forth a little bit before each segment, but um, Mm. their stories are put into the prompter. So when they're looking at the camera, looking at the viewer, they're actually reading. Um, We don't have, and we could do that, but we don't. As meteorologists, we just talk off the cuff. So that's yeah. something different too, um, but I think it makes it much more conversational. Absolutely, as well. Should make them f- flip their stuff around backwards. I know, and right? Read, <laughs> yeah. read it backwards, then they'll know <laughs> no, what it's like to be it. you. <laughs> you ever right. had someone? So when I have to read a prompter, I'm awful at uh, it. <laughs> you, uh, you, you have kind of a reputation uh, in life and work Uh-oh. as a bit of a prankster. So has it, did anyone, has anyone ever pranked you like off to the side of that green screen while you're trying to do the weather and all of a sudden there's like a dancing bear or something? Yeah. Um, so most of the pranks have been behind the scenes, but we definitely, I think, try to get each other to laugh. Um, Mm -hmm. that can be tricky though, depending on what news stories are coming up. So you've got to be careful there. Um, you know, oh, yeah. sometimes if there are more than one of us meteorologists, like if there's a big snowstorm or something like that, um, we'll start to get a little goofy and, and trying to make each other, um, you know, come out of our shell a little bit and be less serious. But um, but I think when we're on air, we try to be we try to be pretty pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, when there's a storm and there's more one than one of you working, you've been working long hours, you probably tend to get a little punchy. A little punchy. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) exactly. Yeah. And then they bring in the coffee and the bagels, you know, and Mm -hmm. yeah, more coffee. Uh, I want to ask you about Star Wars in a minute, but first I want to talk about something more serious because, you know, as as we've touched on earlier, uh, being a woman on TV, people are critical probably more critical than they are of men and nasty in emails and have things to say that they wouldn't ever say to a person's face. And how was that? How do you deal with that? So it's, um, 
20 years, uh, a lot of therapy, um, <laughs> but in, in all seriousness, right? Uh, um, yeah. You know, you, you rewind 20 years ago, we didn't have social media. And mm -hmm. so we would get critical um, emails or just letters. And so, you know, it took a lot for somebody to find your email address, email you, or to sit down and write a letter to insult you. And yeah. so it was a little less frequent, um, mm -hmm. but, you know, you put yourself out there, you must get this too on, on the radio, you know, you, you are talking off the cuff and, and sometimes you might say something that people don't like, even if you pronounce a word wrong, um, you know, people sort of would jump on you for it, but it's the physical part of, you know, when people get personal, that yeah. it gets especially hurtful. And um, a lot of women have sent mean things to me, which is um, really difficult to sort of wrap Have each other's around. back. Have each other's exactly. back at least. Yeah, yeah. And I have to say that, you know, the woman that I work with here, we, um, you know, we don't fall into the, you know, squawk at each other or, um, you know, tear each other down. And I think it's because we're all sort of aware of the people out there that are waiting to to do exactly that. Now mm -hmm. that we have social media, it uh, became very easy for a while um, for people to feel absolutely fine with uh, saying whatever they wouldn't say to your face, but, yeah, of course. Um, you know, whether it's about a dress you're wearing or your hair being out of place or, um, how you look in general that, that day. Um, listen, you know, we all, we all have bad days at work or days that, um, uh, we don't feel or look our best. And so that's really one of the hardest parts of the job, right? Picking yourself up when you're having mm -hmm. a really bad day and putting, your persona out there and, and, yeah. um, you know, trying to make the best of it. And so, you know, as the years have gone on, um, you know, you learn to block people and, um, you learn to just not give them your time, right? If you don't yeah. engage it, it gives them no power. And I learned a while ago too, this goes back to that therapy, therapy part where so much of that has to do with me um or with you it has to do with the person that is writing right. something mm -hmm. so a lot of self-work you know you're not going to fix other people but a lot of work on sort of how to process that stuff yourself let's look at a fun picture of you and your husband tom because uh <laughs> one of the speaking of things that people don't know about sarah long is how big a star wars fan you are uh this uh <laughs> this true. picture of you two i'm not sure exactly where you oh. were but uh, this is another, I stole this from your social media. Um, yeah, no, you but, were, uh, were, we were at Batu, um, at, at Disney World. This was <sighs> December 2019, right before um, COVID hit that spring. Um, Tom and myself and my family, we all went to uh, Disney together and, of course, went on, you know, the Star Wars rides. And it was, it, it you know, I had been to Disney a few times growing up. Um, but Tom had never been before. And so for him to walk into Batu, which is the, the Star Wars land, I think I'm saying that right. Um, he was just blown away. And the reason I'm a Star Wars fan is because I'm married to him. We've been married for <laughs> 20, or we've been together for 27 years or something like that. Um, and so, you know, I had no chance. I, I, was bound to become a Star Wars fan, but watching him sort of take that in because for him, it's such a childhood thing. And he uh -huh. lost his dad uh, several years ago. And, um, you know, I think it was a real heavy moment for him mm -hmm. of feeling like he was in a Star Wars movie. Again, he had never experienced Disney. And for those of you who have, you know that it's sort of all encompassing. Um, and so it was really cool to, to watch you know him go through that we he let my mom be what was the forget the name of the ride where um you're in the millennium falcon and and um he let my mom be the i think the gunner or something like that and he was like never again 
My goodness. <laughs> uh, I'm or no, maybe she was really, at it anyway. Really good things about it because maybe that will uh, convince my wife. Yeah. We're looking at maybe this fall taking our first trip uh, and to that particular destination. That's yeah. where I want to go. It will not disappoint. And make sure that you, uh, you know, go to the uh, cantina and get some blue milk and uh yeah pretty 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 cool stuff you won't regret okay, it i love it i remember when my parents went i assume you're not taking the boys i remember when my parents no. went for the first time without my sister and i and we were like how could disney be fun without us i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i think we'll find a way i uh, think so I <laughs> I remember, I remember back in the day when we when we worked together, uh, when we did the morning show together uh, on WPOR, talking about music a lot because you would always talk about bands that you were listening to or you and Tom would go see in concert that I'd never heard before. Um, what was yeah. the last concert you went to see? Uh, gosh, and it's it probably was actually, a band I've never oh, heard of before. Oh, right. Um, the, actually, the last show that I went to see wasn't a concert it was we went down to see henry rollins um in boston his first spoken word tour um you know since the pandemic started and i remember so many times during the pandemic saying i would really just love to hear what henry rollins has to say right now um <laughs> we've, always, we've always tried to go see him when he's come around we've seen him several several times in the northeast and so that was a really nice way to sort of work it's uh work our way back in um the last funny the last thing i saw before the pandemic was mark Marin, um and he was at the state theater and then tom and i had tickets to see against me at what was Port City Music Hall. Um, and yeah. I wasn't so comfortable going. It was just, I think it was their last, very last show, um, Port Cities. They didn't know that at the time, but uh, right. Tom ended up going and and I just wasn't comfortable um, with the way that things were going, the pandemic. But yeah, so I'm guessing you haven't heard of Against Me, but check them out. <laughs> Correct. But I do remember Port City Music Hall. It was a great venue. It's sad yeah. that we lost that during the pandemic, but we did get a great arcade to move into there. So that was uh, a right. nice spot in town. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure. We're not going to go off on video games now. I want to thank you for being on the Main People podcast, Sarah Long. It's been really terrific talking to you. And you probably have a newscast to do now. Something like that. But it was great catching up with you, John. And I know I'll see you soon. Do you have any friends that have ridden a bicycle from Fort Kent, Maine to Key West, Florida? I do, and he's a Guinness World Record holder. We call him Bicycle Brendan, and he's one of the most inspirational people you'll ever meet on the Maine People Podcast.